This next scenario has to do with end of life care. So the scenario goes, a patient's advanced directive states they do not want to be kept on life support if they become terminally ill. However, the patient's family disagrees with this decision and insists on pursuing all available life-sustaining treatment. The patient is unable to communicate due to their condition. How can the nurse advocate for the patient's end-of-life wishes while balancing the family desires and emotions? So I want to say I've had a handful of run-ins with this end-of-life dilemmas. There's been a handful of times where a patient comes in intubated because maybe they have a heart attack on the spa or a stroke on the spa in the environment and nobody of course knows what their wishes are. So they save the patient's life. You could say put them on a the ventilator and bring them to the hospital. And then when they come to the hospital, it comes to be known that the patient did not want to be resuscitated if they were to lose their, their heart rate or their heartbeat. But in this situation, a patient is now alive. Maybe they're not on any kind of pressures, but they're intubated. So basically, they're almost on life support. Maybe sedated, ventilated, and now we have the patient's family coming in. So what happens lots of times is us bringing in the patient, you could say, back to life. The family's thoughts are, okay, my family member wanted to not be rest resuscitated, but they did get resuscitated. So now they're here technically alive. So this is really tricky because your loved one did not want to get resuscitated. They do, did not want to get put on life support, but here they are on life support and they're technically alive. So now it becomes a battle of, you could say, morals and of wishes because the family might have been okay with them not being resuscitated, but the fact that they're they have already been resuscitated, that changes it a lot because they're technically alive. So usually what I do is I sit down with first my manager, maybe the physicians or the the social um the, the person that does like the uh the, the social stuff that communicates between the family, all that kind of stuff. I forgot what the name of the the, the person was, but they're the social worker, I'm sorry, the social worker. And if the family is having a hard time deciding, I usually speak to the doctors, the manager, and all those people that help collaborate and contribute to the decision. And usually what the end result is, is somebody goes in and they first focus on a patient. They ask what the kind of the patient want and if the family knows that the patient wanted to not be resuscitated, but, but here they are. There's a few things we could do because saying shut everything off right away might not be something that they really want to do or think about. You want to maybe ease into it slowly. If they're really having a hard time grasping it, it's always good to just say, hey, you know, let's leave them on here for 24 hours, see what happens. But then again, that is like a flip of a coin because then sometimes what happens is, okay, I've been having my loved one on life support for the last 24 hours. What's another day? What's another three days? Let's try a week. Lots of times it gets pushed further and further and further. And sometimes this addition of time makes the decision even harder. So it's always good to lay out all the options, but try to always make it time focused. You want to always emphasize that the longer they are on life support, the harder it is for them to go back to their normal. And it's also harder for us to figure out their actual neurological status because they're sedated and intubated, right? So we're doing almost everything for them in a sense. So we're not sure if they're having a stroke under sedation, both those sedation, all that kind of stuff. But it's still hard to tell. People process the sedation a little bit differently. So as long as it takes a little bit longer for them to wake up. You always want to just figure out what the patient wanted, what the family wants, and what they're thinking. And you want to support and facilitate their decision in the most educated way. And I always like to focus on the patient because you have to ultimately go with what the patient wanted, even though it's really hard for a family to do that. But you always want to have the focus on the patient because with 
the families are going to disagreements. They got to figure that stuff out. You always want to present the information in an educated way where it's non-biased but patient-focused because the family doesn't see what happens in a hospital, what happens with prolonged intubation, what happens when people go from a vent to a trach to a nursing home. That stuff is not really aware to the public eye. You have that the knowledge of what can happen. So that's why I always say patient focus, patient focus. And it's never the wrong decision if they go with what their loved one wants because if they pass away, they pass away. It, it, it happened. It is what it is. That's what the patient wanted. But what really sucks is if the family decides to keep them intubated pro prolongedly and then they get tricked, they get sent to nursing home, and then sometimes the family even feels even worse because now they're technically off the ventilator. They're somewhat there. So right now, it's even harder to say goodbye because more of them is there technically than there was when they were sedated, intubated, and all those kind of medications because they're more present in a way, but you don't know what they are neurologically. But they're technically more alive in a sense versus what they were. So that makes the decision even harder. So with this one, I always want to focus on the patient's wishes and always let the family know that if they do decide to go with the patient's wishes, that is never going to be the wrong answer.